Magandang umaga, Pilipinas! Welcome to Eagle News Mornings from Canada. I'm Archie Rose, Natividad Yi, reporting from Vancouver in the province of British Columbia, Canada, bringing you news and commentary from across the country. Good Monday morning! We start another week. As you are grabbing a fresh cup of coffee, let's check out what the weather looks like in Manila. AccuWeather is forecasting a high of 32 degrees Celsius. Looks like there may be a thunderstorm coming this morning, so magingat ingat tayo dyan. Here's what the weather looks like across Canada. Our weather street scene comes from Surrey, British Columbia. In this video, we see the Fraser River and the Petulo Bridge that links the city of Surrey to the city of New Westminster which makes up part of the Greater Vancouver area. We'll go across the country starting from the West Coast. Vancouver, Canada, partly sunny at 23 degrees. Edmonton, cloudy with showers at 18 degrees. Calgary, a couple of thunder showers at 12 degrees. Also in Regina, a couple of thunder showers at 20 degrees. In Winnipeg, warm with increasing clouds at 32 degrees. Montreal, mostly cloudy with thunderstorms at 26 degrees. In Ottawa, variable clouds at 25 degrees. Halifax, cloudy at 18 degrees. Fredericton, partly sunny at 28 degrees. And Toronto, sunny at 26 degrees. Here are some of the stories we'll cover today. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau continues support for Canadians in COVID-19 response. Canadian government pledges $100 million to Canadian Red Cross. Honorable Bardis Jagger greets Canadians for Canadian Multiculturalism Day. John Horgan, Premier of British Columbia, introduces the Anti-Racism Network. British Columbia begins phase three of its restart plan. And BC Health Officer to take over a Hollywood actress's social media account. And we'll take a tour around Vancouver Island. Now over to our top story. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau addressed continued economic and financial support to Canadians and small businesses in the ongoing fight against COVID-19. Since the outbreak of COVID-19 cases in Canada, the federal government was quick to respond in providing aid to Canadians, starting with the Canada Emergency Response Benefit, or CERB, where individuals whose employment was affected during this time are able to apply for a $2,000 tax taxable benefit every four weeks for up to 24 weeks, an increase in the Canada Child Benefit, and many more financial assistance programs made available for people with disabilities, post-secondary students and recent graduates, seniors, and Indigenous peoples. The Prime Minister made the statement at Big Rig Brewery, located in Kanata, Ontario, who converted their operations to produce hand sanitizers for local community organizations and frontline workers. Using Big Rig as an example, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau shared additional programs to provide aid to small businesses. With a growing demand for hand sanitizer, food and beer, Big Rig used the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy to hire back almost all their members of staff. And to save money on rent, they also used the Canada Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance. Big Rig is one of the thousands of companies across the country stepping up to help their workers and their community during this tough time. In addition to his remarks in supporting small businesses, Justin Trudeau also announced funding of $100 million to the Canadian Red Cross to provide support in long-term care facilities and communities in need of help. 
This was in response to help alleviate the Canadian Armed Forces who stepped up and provided aid to stabilize COVID-19 cases in facilities that were heavily affected by the outbreak. Since the deployment of Canadian Armed Forces in care facilities in Quebec on April 20th, Canadian troops have helped to stabilize the situation in 47 long-term care residences. They will be stabilizing another four residences in the coming days. The reinforcement of troops has yielded positive results as the federal government and the province of Quebec have worked on a transition plan to allow the transfer of ongoing operations from military personnel to civilian personnel. On peut annoncer que la Croix Rouge canadienne viendra prêter main forte jusqu'au 15 septembre. Il y a quelques semaines, notre gouvernement avait accordé 100 millions de dollars à la Croix-Rouge, ce qui va leur permettre de fournir 900 personnes prêtes à servir dans les CHSLD. Une première tranche de 150 personnes sera déployée d'ici le 6 juillet et 750 personnes additionnelles entreront en poste d'ici le 29 juillet. L'arrivée de la Croix-Rouge va donc permettre à nos forces armées de retourner à leurs fonctions habituelles et être prêts à toute éventualité. D'ici le 15 septembre, on va quand même maintenir des équipes prêtes à intervenir rapidement en cas d'urgence. Les Canadiens peuvent toujours compter sur notre appui. In light of recent current events that has put more focus in diversity and inclusion in the workplace and the community, Canada celebrates Canadian Multiculturalism Day. The Honorable Bardish Chagger, Minister of Diversity and Inclusion and Youth, greeted Canadians on this occasion. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has tasked me with responsibilities to ensure that Canadian diversity is celebrated and respected in all of its forms. And I need the help of all Canadians to achieve this. In these difficult and trying times, community is so important. While connecting with your loved ones virtually, also take the time to explore the many activities available online and on social media to mark this year's Canadian Multiculturalism Day. Profession de cette journée pour souligner nos différences qui nous rend si canadiens et engageons-nous à faire du Canada un pays meilleur et encore plus inclusif. Over in British Columbia, Premier John Horgan also greeted the province on Canadian Multiculturalism Day. As one of the most culturally diverse demographics in Canada, the Premier introduced Resilience BC, a new and anti-racism network aimed at connecting communities, increased capacity to share information and resources, and coordinate training and anti-racism initiatives. Acknowledge the rich cultures and unceded territories of Indigenous peoples who have lived here since time immemorial, and we welcome newcomers who have traveled here from countries around the world to build a better life for their families. Generations of families now call this province home. And today and every day, we honor and celebrate the diverse cultures and traditions that make our province and country what they are. Our government is working with communities to build a more fair, just, and inclusive province for everyone. We've reestablished the Human Rights Commission and launched Resilience BC, a new anti-racism network. And we have selected the Victoria Immigrant and Refugee Center to act as a provincial hub to help communities respond to racism. We've made good progress and there is more to do. We all have a role to play in this week and especially for those of us with privilege. Today we join all Canadians in celebrating Canadian Multiculturalism Day and standing up for diversity, inclusion and respect. British Columbia continues to ease more restrictions in the province. We have with us live Eagle News correspondent Kathleen Cruz who tells us more. Good morning, Kathleen. Good morning, Archie. 
British Columbia begins phase three of four-phase COVID-19 restart plan. This allows flexibility for non-essential travel within the province. Restrictions will remain for international travelers returning to BC, required them by law to self-isolate for 14 days and with the self-isolation plan. BC Premier John Horgan's announcement of the phase three comes with guidelines who will be traveling within the province. This includes pre-trip planning, respecting travel advisories, and practicing the foundation protocols such as safe physical distancing, good hygiene, and of course, staying home if sick. BC State of Emergency will remain until July 7 to keep British Columbians safe. Premier John Horgan also mentioned in his daily updates, quote, We are asking British Columbians to be respectful of the communities, you travel and do your research before you leave. We will help people get the tools and information they need to navigate this new normal safely, unquote. He stated that provincial government is working closely with the federal government to keep the international border close and not give up the ground they've worked for many months to flatten the curve. Under enhanced protocols, British Columbians expect most businesses in the tourism industry to reopen, like hotels, cabins, resorts, hostels, and lodges. On July 2020, motion picture and television production industry will also resume as long as business orders and COVID-19 safety plan is in place. Entertainment industries like movie theaters can now also reopen. Here is Dr. Boney Henry for additional reminders regarding Phase 3. We have flattened our curve and safely increased our social interactions, whether that's seeing friends, going back to work, or back to in-class learning that we have seen in the past couple of weeks. We've done this by continuing to follow our core foundational rules that I have spoken about many times. These rules are our guideposts. They're the foundations of how we can continue to safely move forward. Until we have an effective treatment or a vaccine, COVID-19 will be with us in our communities, thankfully right now at a very low level, and we want to keep it that way. We have seen all around us what can happen if we're not careful. In Vancouver, Kathleen Cruz, Eagle News, will live in interesting times. Thank you so much for the update, Kathleen. You know, I know that you are quite an avid traveler, and unfortunately, the other places out there are unavailable to check out or travel to. But can you tell us, are you thinking of visiting any places here in BC? Yes, Archie. Actually, me and my family have already made a reservation for a camping this coming August. And because we were not really going for international travel for quite a few, I don't know, months or years, but I think we're just going to be staying in BC for now. Well, thank you so much. You know, it's definitely great to just stay local and stay safe. After the break, BC Health Officer to take over a Hollywood actress's social media account. And we'll take a tour around Vancouver Island. You're watching Eagle News Mornings from Canada. Patindi ng patindi at tuloy-tuloy ang pagpapakita ng galing ng ating mga TNG aspirants. Abangan ng kanilang performances sa pinakamalaking talent competition sa buong bansa, Tagisan ng Galing. Tagisan ng Galing is presented by SMC Infrastructure, Building a Better World. Sanding sugar-free white coffee, puno ng white coffee taste without the sugar, kaya lower calories. Try mo na, sanding sugar-free white coffee. Sarap ng white coffee, now sugar-free.
Fletch approved Nutrishox, the only premium dog food with active boost for optimum energy and prebiotics that help strengthen immunity. Just like Catherine Bernardo, going listo, ganado ang fur babies niyo. Listo ganado sa Nutrishox. Magnolia Chicken Templados, delicious, ready to cook and freshly marinated daily. Pure Foods Lunch and Meat, pure sarap for every family. Star Chunky Cheese Corned Beef, ang cheesy ng corned beef mo. Walang duda, kids can tell na number one ang Pure Foods Standard Juicy, ang tender, ang juicy, ang sarap. Co-presented by Cooper, expert in air conditioning and electromechanical. Also engaged in structural, electrical, fire protection, plumbing, and sanitary services. Cooper, your ultimate MEPS and air conditioning solutions. Ulan Incorporated International, fight against global poverty. New San Jose Builders Incorporated. Canrib Corporation, your ventilation and air conditioning specialist. Vita Herbs Philippines Green Coffee, masarap, mabango, at healthy pa. Puerto Rico Resort and Convention Center, Cabiao Nueva Ecija. I love Puerto Rico. In participation with Rain or Shine Elastomeric Waterproofing Paint, Matimco, R Square Variables Incorporated, Compizel Enterprises, SciShow International Trading Corporation, DN Steel, EMAC UPB Roof Corporation, Hey, Gretchen Ho here, and I'm a white coffee lover. Creamy kasi, and very yummy. Pero mas masarap kung hindi nakaka-guilty. Check my new discovery, Sand May Sugar-Free White Coffee. Puno ng white coffee taste without the sugar, kaya lower calories. Try mo na! Sand May Sugar-Free White Coffee. Sarap ng white coffee, now sugar-free. The Bulacan Bulk Water Project is a treatment facility that will provide bulk water to the 24 municipalities of Bulacan to meet the increasing water demand of its residents. Through concessionaire, SMC Infrastructure also initiated the significant improvements of the Manila North Harbor Port, the country's busiest port. Listo at ganado ang baby ko sa VET-approved Nutri-Chunks. With active boost and prebiotics na pampalisto. Made with real meat, with essential nutrients to help them grow healthy and happy. Listo, ganado sa Nutri-Chunks. Ikaw lang ang star ng buhay ko. Para sa akin, perfect ka. Ibang klase ang sarap. Ng corn beef mo. Ang cheesy ng corn beef mo. Pag star chunky cheese corn beef, sarap ng corn beef, inangat pa ng real cheese cubes. Kaya perfect ang sarap. Star chunky cheese corn beef. You're watching Eagle News Mornings from Canada. I'm Archie Rose, the TV Dad Yi, reporting from Vancouver, Canada. Recently recognized by the New York Times as the doctor who aced the coronavirus test, BC Health Officer Dr. Bonnie Henry will take over the social media account of actress Olivia Munn. Eagle News correspondent Vanessa De La Cruz tells us more. Olivia Munn, a Hollywood actress who has starred in films such as X-Men and Iron Man, will be giving her social media accounts for one day to the now famous Dr. Bonnie Henry, the BC's provincial health officer. Dr. Bonnie Henry will mainly be on Olivia Munn's Instagram account as part of One World's campaign, Pass the Mic initiative, where we see Hollywood stars give their social media accounts to experts to try and combat the coronavirus misinformation that is going around. Although Dr. Bonnie Henry has admitted that she's not so tech savvy, but she has a team that will be helping her, as seen in the interview. Ask, um, how social media savvy you are and if you're looking forward to taking over Olivia Munn's social media account. 
<laughs> yes, I, I'm not particularly <laughs> social media savvy, I have to admit, um, but I'm really excited about this and uh, uh, had a great opportunity to to uh, develop some messages um, that will be coming out to, today. And and really, it, it's about uh, it's about solidarity and it's about uh, the fact that all of us are dealing with this unprecedented time. And you know, we've talked today about the things that we need to do differently because of COVID-19 in communities that that have had traditional uh, traditionally been um, uh, differentially impacted and when we do work together it, it it works we can make a difference and so that's the messages I'll, I'll be talking about I'll be talking about uh, things like we are all in the same storm around the world and it really is however different boats that we are in and we need to be compassionate and we need to reach out and we need to do this together as a global community as well as a community here in BC. So um, I'm really kind of excited about it. <laughs> there are other more tech savvy people who will be helping me, <laughs> so that's the good news. There are other celebrities that have joined this initiative such as Julia Roberts. One World Campaign is a global movement to try and end extreme poverty and preventable diseases by 2030. In Victoria, BC, and the Mandela Cruz, Eagle News, we live in interesting times. Thanks, Vanessa. Eagle News correspondent Jeanette Duazo takes us on a tour around Shimanis, Vancouver Island, and shows us the outdoor gallery of giant murals. Take a look. Today, I am heading towards north of Vancouver Island about an hour and 15 minutes by car and we are going to Shemanus. The name Shemanus is derived from a local native shaman and prophet Shemanus, roughly translated to broken chest. Legend says that the man survived a fatal wound to his chest, becoming a powerful chief. His name was taken to identify the Shemanus First Nation or formerly known Shemanus Indian Band community. Let's go for a stroll in Shemanus and check out all the giant murals in town. In Chimenez, British Columbia, the home of the world-class outdoor gallery of murals, Jeanette Guazzo, we live in interesting times. Jeanette, EBC is the home of wholesome, entertaining, and informative programs. Programs like Daily Insight. Oh. Make Daily Insight your source of the latest news in business and technology. The program features inspirational stories behind 
small and medium enterprises, and useful advice for starting your own business. Daily Insight, find it on Facebook and on YouTube. For more news updates, visit our website at eaglenews.net and eaglenewslive.com. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash eaglenews and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash eaglenews. That's our program for today. Thank you for watching. On behalf of our Eagle News Canada team, we will continue to keep you updated and informed so that you can continue to keep yourself, your family, and friends safe. In Vancouver, Archie Rose and T.D. Eagle News, we live in interesting times. Stay tuned for Aguila Balita, hosted by Mark R. Velasco. Thank you, Archie Rose. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Namapa ang mga pangunahing balita sa loob at labas ng bansa. Tinagit at kinalap ng Aguila News Team. Aguila Balita! Narito ang may init na balita ngayon ay Lunes, Hunyo 29, 2020. Sa ulo ng mga balita. Siyam naraan at walumpong UV Express units bibiyahe na sa 47 ruta sa Metro Manila at mga karatig lalawigan simula ngayong araw. COVID-19 cases sa bansa umabot na sa 35,455. Bilang naman ng recoveries umakyat na sa 9,686. Pamahalaan na nakahanda para sa pagbabalik ng marami pang overseas Filipino workers na naapektuhan ng COVID-19 pandemic. At sa ating balitang abroad, Northeastern India, sinalanta ng malawakang pagbaha. Labing anim na katao na ang patay. Ako ang inyong magiging tagapaghatid balita. Ako po si Maricar Velasco. Sa detalye ng mga balita, simula sa araw na ito ay babiyahe na ang nasa Sham Naraan at 80 UV Express Units sa 47 ruta sa Metro Manila at mga Karatig Lalawigan. Ayon sa Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board, hindi na kailangang mag-apply ng special permits ang mga naturang UV Express. Madaragdagan din ng mga biyahe ng jeep depende sa magiging passenger demand. Samantala, nananawagan naman si LTFRB Chair Martin Delgra sa mga operators at drivers ng mga UV Express units na mahigpit na sumunod sa ipinapatupad na guidelines sa ilalim ng LTFRB Memorandum Circular 2020-025. Sa ilalim ng naturang panuntunan, ang mga UV Express units ay dapat magbiyahe terminal to terminal, hindi dapat magsakay at magbaba ng pasahero sa kahabaan ng EDSA at Commonwealth Avenue. Idinagdag pa ng LTFRB chief na mamamalagi ang kasalukuyang UV Express fare rate na dalawang piso kada kilometro at hindi dapat na magpatupad ng fare adjustment maliban kung pahihintulutan ng LTFRB. Nagpaalala ang Department of Education sa mga magulang na hanggang June 30 na lamang ang enrollment period para sa public schools para sa school year 2020-2021. Kaugnay nito, hinimok ng DepEd ang mga magulang na isumite na ang Learner Enrollment Survey Form bago o sa mismong pecha ng pagtatapos ng enrollment. Sa tala ng kagawaran, umaabot na sa 15,182,075 ang nakapag-enroll simula noong June 1. Sa bilang na ito, 14,548,915 ang nag-enroll sa public schools at sa alternative learning system. Samantala, maaaring tumawag sa DepEd Central Office Public Assistance and Action Center ang mga magulang kung mayroong nais linawin. Makikita ninyo ang mga contact number ng DepEd sa inyong TV screen.
Umakit na sa 35,455 ang kabuang bilang ng COVID-19 cases na naitala sa bansa. Ito ay matapos makapagtala ang Department of Health ng 653 na karagdagan pang kaso. Sa mga bagong bilang na ito ay 485 ang fresh cases habang 168 naman ang late cases. Sa mga fresh cases, 245 ang mula sa National Capital Region, 120 sa Region 7, ang 112 naman ay mula sa iba pang lugar sa bansa at 8 naman mula sa hanay ng repatriates. Sa mga late cases naman, ang 111 ay mula sa NCR, 11 mula sa Region 7, 25 naman sa iba pang lugar sa bansa at 21 naman mula sa hanay ng repatriates. May naitala namang 258 na naka-recover mula sa sakit. Dahil dito, umakyat na sa 9,686 ang bilang ng mga pasyenteng gumaling mula sa virus. May walo namang naitalang nasawi dahil sa COVID-19. Sa mga, ito, sa mga nasawi na ito, lima ang namatay noon pang June 13 hanggang June 22, ngunit ayon lamang o ngayon lamang na-validate ang ng kagawaran. Sa ngayon, umabot na sa 1,244 ang kabuang bilang ng nasawi sa bansa dahil sa COVID-19. May dalawa namang na doubling recoveries ang inalis ng DOH mula sa kabuang bilang ng mga naka-recover mula sa COVID-19 sa bansa. Habang may isa naman ang inalis mula sa kabuang bilang ng COVID-19 case sa bansa matapos matukoy na nagkaroon ng duplikasyon. Nilinaw ng DOH na asahan ang ilang pagbabago sa mga numerong kanilang inire-report dahil patuloy ang kanilang mga ginagawang validation. Nadagdagan pa ang bilang ng mga PNP personnel na nahawa ng coronavirus disease. Sa tala ng Philippine National Police, umabot na sa 632 ang kanilang mga tauhan na nagpositibo sa virus. Samantala, umakyat naman sa 334 ang bilang ng mga naka-recover sa sakit. Namamalagi naman sa siyam ang bilang ng mga nasawi dahil sa COVID-19. Nasa 648 naman ang probable COVID-19 cases at 949 ang suspected cases. Nagtungo sa Cebu City ang medical team ng Armed Forces of the Philippines para makatulong sa paglaban sa COVID-19, kasunod ng pagdami ng bilang ng kaso sa syudad. Sinabi ni AFP Chief of Staff General Filimon Santos Jr. ang team na tinatawag na Task Force Central ay binubuo ng siyam na doktor, sampung nurses at labing tatlong medical aides. Pinangungunahan nito ni Major Maria Adesita Sagario na sumailalim sa precautionary swab testing at flu vaccination bago magtungo sa Villamore Air Base, Pasay City kahapon ng umaga sakay ng Philippine Air Force C-130 transport plane. Dumalo naman sa send-off ng tropa si NAS Presidential Peace Advisor Carlito Galvez Jr., Chief Implementer ng National Task Force on COVID-19 Environment Secretary Roy Simatu at AFP Vice Chief of Staff Vice Admiral Gauden Chocoliado Jr. Nagpasalamat naman si Galvez sa mga sundalo dahil sa pagtugon sa natulungan ang mga health workers sa Cebu City. Nagpaalala naman si Secretary Simato sa team na ingatan ang kanilang sarili habang gumaganap ng tungkulin bilang kinatawan ng AFP. Susunod pa mahalaan na kahanda sa pagbabalik ng mas marami pang OFWs ayon kay Secretary Bello. Ang detalye na yan sa pagbabalik ng Agila Balita sa umaga. Agila. Agila. Patindi ng patindi at tuloy-tuloy ang pagpapakita ng galing ng ating mga TNG aspirants. Abangan ng kanilang performances sa pinakamalaking talent competition sa buong bansa, Tagisan ng Galing. Gisa ng Galing is presented by SMC Infrastructure, Building a Better World. Sandig Sugar-Free White Coffee, puno ng white coffee taste without the sugar, kaya lower calories. Try mo na, Sandig Sugar-Free White Coffee, sarap ng white coffee, now sugar-free. 
Vet approved NutriShocks, the only premium dog food with active boost for optimum energy and prebiotics that help strengthen immunity. Just like Catherine Bernardo, going listo, ganado ang fur babies niyo. Listo ganado sa NutriShocks. Magnolia Chicken Templados, delicious, ready to cook and freshly marinated daily. Pure Foods Lunch and Meat, pure sarap for every family. Star Chunky Cheese Corned Beef, ang cheesy ng corned beef mo. Walang duda, kids can tell na number one ang Pure Foods Tender Juicy. Ang tender, ang juicy, ang sarap. Co-presented by Cooper, expert in air conditioning and electromechanical. Also engaged in structural, electrical, fire protection, Plumbing and sanitary services. Cooper, your ultimate MEPS and air conditioning solutions. Ulan Incorporated International, fight against global poverty. New San Jose Builders Incorporated. Canrib Corporation, your ventilation and air conditioning specialist. Vita Herbs Philippines Green Coffee, masarap, mabango, at healthy pa. Puerto Rico Resort and Convention Center, Cabiao Nueva Ecija. I love Puerto Rico. In participation with Rain or Shine Elastomeric Waterproofing Paint, Matinko, R Square Variables Incorporated, Compizel Enterprises, SciShow International Trading Corporation, DN Steel, EMAC UPB Roof Corporation. Hey, Aggression Ho here, and I'm a white coffee lover. Creamy kasi, and very yummy, pero mas masarap kung hindi nakaka guilty. Check my new discovery, Sand May Sugar Free White Coffee. Puno ng white coffee taste without the sugar, kaya lower calories. Try mo na! Sand May Sugar Free White Coffee. Sarap ng white coffee, now sugar free. The successful development of Tplex or Tarlac Pangasinan La Union Expressway in 2009 a four-lane toll road that extends from Tarlac City to Rosario La Union with an additional approved extension of 56 kilometers all the way to San Juan La Union. This is expected to reduce travel time to Baguio and other provinces in northern Luzon. Realizing the vision of creating a better world for Filipinos fueled the team's focus. Listo at ganado ang baby ko sa VET-approved Nutri-Chunks. With active boost and prebiotics na pampalisto. Made with real meat, with essential nutrients to help them grow healthy and happy. Listo, ganado sa Nutri-Chunks. Ikaw lang ang star ng buhay ko. Para sa akin, perfect ka. Ang cheesy ng corned beef mo. Pag star chunky cheese corned beef, sarap ng corned beef, inangat pa ng real cheese cubes. Star chunky cheese corned beef. Nakahanda ang pamahalaan para sa pagbabalik ng marami pang overseas Filipino workers na naapektuhan ng COVID-19 pandemic. Sinabi ni Labor Secretary Sylvester Bellu III, may assistant programs ang ahensya para tulungan ang mga kababayang naapektuhan ng trabaho sa abroad at babalik na sa Pilipinas. Pinasalamatan naman ng kalihim ang Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines o CAAP matapos tiyakin na papayagang makalipad ang mas maraming airline para makauwi ang mga OFWs. Niregulate ng CAAP ang flight sa bansa upang makontrol ang pagkalat ng nakamamatay na coronavirus disease. Gayun man, nakaapekto ang restriksyon ng CAA para masunod ang mga kababayan o masundo ang mga kababayan nating gusto ng magbalik bansa matapos mawalan ng trabaho sa abroad dahil sa outbreak. Sa congressional hearing nitong biyernes ay tiniyak ni CAAP Director General Jim Sindyongko na handa silang magdagdag ng flights para makauwi na sa Pilipinas ang mas maraming OFWs. Suspendido sa loob ng dalawang linggo ang pagbabiyahe at pagpapauwi ng mga locally stranded individuals o LSIs pauwi sa Eastern at Western Visayas. Ito ay matapos aprubahan ni COVID-19 National Task Force Head Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana ang kahilingan ng mga local government units sa mga nabanggit na rehiyon. Ayon kay Secretary Lorenzana, nagkaroon na tumaas ang kaso ng COVID-19 sa mga nabanggit na rehiyon matapos dumating ang mga LSI na nagpositive sa virus batay sa datos. Kaugnay nito, hinikayat ng kalihim ang mga LSIs na papuntang Negros Occidental, Iloilo at buong Region 8 na huwag munang magtutungo sa mga airport at seaports habang umiiral ang suspensyon. 
99% ng tapos ang bagong passenger terminal building sa Clark International Airport. Ayon sa Department of Transportation, inaasahang bubuksan na ang naturang pasilidad sa ikatlong quarter ng taon. Sinabi ng DOTR na magiging triple ang kapasidad ng bagong terminal ng paliparan. Mula sa 4.2 million capacity annually ay magiging 12.2 million passengers na kung kayang inilang i-accommodate. Inihayag pa ng DOTR na nagpatuloy ang construction ng terminal sa kabila ng COVID-19 pandemic. Gayunman, binigyang diin ng kagawaran na mahigit sa health, mahigit na health at safety measures ang ipinatupad upang maiwasan na magkaroon ng transmission ng virus sa mga manggagawa. Layunin din ng nasabing proyekto na palawakin pa ang kapasidad ng Clark International Airport upang makatulong sa decongestion ng Ninoy Aquino International Airport. Gayun din makatulong sa pagbibigay ng trabaho at paunlarin ang ekonomiya ng mga lalawigan sa North at Central Luzon. Sa iba pang balita, umabot sa 31 lindola at moderate emission ang naitala ng Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology sa Kanlaon sa nakalipas na araw. Ayon sa FIVOC, sa naitalang lindol sa Kanlaon, 30 ang volcano tectonic earthquakes na naramdaman sa western flanks ng vulkan at isang volcanic earthquake sa summit area. Nasa 300 metro naman ang taas ng ibinugang white steam-laden plumes ng vulkan. Ayon pa sa FIVOX, naglabas din ang kanlaon ng sulfur dioxide na ang emission levels ay nag average ng 116 tons kada araw simula noong June 27. Namamalagi naman sa alert level 1 ng kanlaon at patuloy na inaabisuhan ang mga residente na huwag pumasok sa loob ng 4-kilometer radius permanent danger zone. Binibili na din ang mga piloto na iwasang magpalipad ng eroplano malapit sa summit ng bulkan. Sinalanta ng baha ang Digod City dahil sa magdamag na pagbuhos ng malakas na ulan. Mga residente pinalikas. Kumuha tayo ng update doon mula kay EBC correspondent Ronnie June Otero. Ronnie? Yes, uh, magandang umaga po. Umabot nga halos sa mga bubong ng bahay sa ilang mga barangay. Sa Digo City, sa Dabo del Sur, ang tubig baha matapos walang humpay na bumuhos ang malakas na mga pagulan simula alas 7 ng gabi kagabi. Giniba ang mga flood control dikes at umapaw ang mga tubig mula sa ilog patungo sa mga kabahayan sa mga barangay. Sa report ng CDR o MC Digos, alas 8 ng gabi ay nakastanbay na ang mga tropa na posibleng, sa posibleng pag-apaw ng kanyo sa river dahil sa sobrang lakas ng ulan. Umabot sa anim ng mga barangay na nasa low-lying areas ang apektuhan gaya ng barangay at playa, barangay Dawis, barangay Kugon, Sinawilan, barangay Zone 1 at barangay Igpit. Pinatayang aabot sa mahigit dalawang daang pamilya naman ang pansamantalang nanunuluyan ngayon sa loob ng Digo City Gymnasium at aabot sa mahigit tatlong pung pamilya ang nanunuluyan sa Digo City National High School din. Kabit kagabi, pahirapan ang pagresyo sa mga residente dahil sa malakas na tubig baha. Kaya naman, umabot hanggang alas 5 ng madaling araw ay nagpapatuloy pa rin ang ginagawang rescue operations. Sinabi ni Mayor Joseph Cagas ng Digo City na nagbigay na siya ng direktiba sa mga department heads sa tungkol Uh, ng lungsod at sinisiguro na matutulungan ang mga pamilyang apektado ng mga pagbaha. Nagpapasalamat naman ang mga residente ng lungsod sa lahat ng mga rescue teams na lumusob sa tubig baha at ililagay ang sarili sa peligro. Maligtas lamang ang buhay ng mga residente kaya naman walang naitalang casualty sa nasabing mga pagbaha po. Sa ibang balita, pumanaw na si dating Congressman Antonio Cuenco sa edad na 83. Ito ang kinumpirma ng kanyang anak na si James Cuenco. Sa kanyang Facebook post, sinabi ni James Cuenco na nagkaroon ng mild fever at ubo ang kanyang ama noong June 18. Sumailalim ang kanyang ama ng swab test ng araw ding iyon at lumabas ang resulta noong June 20 kung saan nagpositibo ito sa COVID-19. Naulila ni Cuenco ang kanyang asawang si Nancy at mga anak na sina Ronald Antonio Jr., Cynthia at James.
Arestado ng NBI ang isang IT student dahil sa sinasabing paghack sa website ng San Beda University at pag-access sa accounts ng mga mag-aaral nito. Kinilala ng NBI ang estudyante na si John Raven Aquino alias Solus na itinuturo rin na leader at founder ng isang grupo ng mga hackers. Nagugat ang kaso sa reklamo ng mga kinatawan ng San Beda kaugnay sa sinasabing paghack at defacement ng kanilang online school management system portal. Sa isinagawang cyber surveillance ng NBI, nabatid na i binunyag sa social media ng Twitter account na at you got PWN ng student personal information at login credentials ng mga estudyante ng San Beda ay inextract mula sa server ng paaralan. Napag-alaman pa ng NBI sa surveillance nito na ang suspect ay gumawa ng account sa github.com na il sa ilalim ng username na you got PWN at doon inilagay ang uh, extracted login database ng San Beda University. Sa user registration database at audit report ng antivirus application ay sinumite ng San Beda sa NBI, napansin ng kawanihan ng isang questionabling user registration sa ilalim ng email na gsh.syntax at gmail.com na inirehistro noong May 26, 2020. Sinabi ng NBI na ang database na nilik sa gethelove.com ay naglalaman ng user email na gh, uh, gsh.syntax at gmail.com gamit ang iba pang IP addresses. Bukod dito, sa audit report ay makikita ang logs ng high-risk malware noong June 2 na nakapasok sa sistema at ang suspect ay nag-install ng backdoor web shell solus.php. Ayon sa NBI, ang handler name na at solus ay pamilyar sa isinagawang investigasyon noon ng NBI cybercrime kay Justin Claveria. Si Claveria ay una ng inresto noong April 21 2020 sa Agoncillo, Batangas. Sinabi ng NBI na si At Solus ay isa sa mga kasabwat ni Claveria sa hacking, phishing at scamming activities. Ito rin daw ang founder at leader ng Global Security Hacker Group na ang mga miyembro ay natukoy ng NBI Cybercrime Division. Batay sa mga impormasyon, natukoy na si At Solus ay si John Raven Aquino. Dahil dito, nagsagawa ng casing at surveillance operation na ang NBI kung saan nakumpirma ang address at sasakyang pagmamalaman may ari ni At Solus batay sa paglalarawan ni Claveria. Nag-apply ang uh, NBI sa Pasig RTC ng search warrant to examine computer data laban kay John Raven Aquino alias Solus at sa iba pang uh, naninirahan sa isang bahay sa Rolling Meadows to Novaliches, Quezon City. Doon inaresto ni Aquino at nakumpiska sa lugar ang mga PayMaya cards, blank cards, skimming device, laptop computer system, cellphones, iPad, router at iba pa. Dinala sa NBI headquarters si Aquino para sa booking procedures. Samantala, kumuha tayo ng update sa ginawang inspeksyon ng DOTR sa operasyon ng mga bus at mga itinalagang bagong bus stops. May report si Erlo Bringas. Para ka rin naasang ng pagsamit na sa bagan o sunod na araw ang labing anim na itinalagang modified bus stops sa matang na ng uh, mga itinalagang bus carousel sa kahabaan ng EDSA. Ngayong araw yung inspeksyon nito na ni uh, DOTR ASEC sa uh, Gadis de Giran at uh, MMBA ASEC uh, Celine Pialago ang ilang mga bus stops na ito dito sa kahabaan ng EDSA. Kanina ay pinuntahan yung uh, Guadalupe bus stops at kompleto na ito sa harang. Meron din itong mga social distancing markings at may mga security guards. Maging yung mga signages para ng pagadol ay hindi malito yung mga pasahero. At uh, hiwalay din yung uh, papasok doon sa MRT station. Maging yung magiging uh, magsisalbing tawiran itong mga pasahero. Sa labing anin na... Uh, ita talagang uh, bus stop sa Long Enza ay uh, labing dalawa na dito ang uh, uh, binuksan na o kompleto na sa ngayon. Na, pero uh, may mga ilan pang mga kakulangan na kailangan na uh, ma-provide ng uh, DOTR maging ng MMD. Isa na dyan yung concrete buyers maging yung ilan pang mga uh, waiting shed at uh, yung iba naman ay uh, halos kompleto na at uh, inaasahang uh, pwede nang magamit sa mga susunod na araw. Pero may mga ilang parte pa rin nitong mga bus stops na ginagawa pa ng sangyon ongoing construction at uh, inaasahang matatapos na uh, in the next few days or weeks 
para nang sa ganun ay uh, maging uh, hintuan at babaan nung mga itinalagang bank carousel dito sa kahabaan ng ESA. Sakaling uh, magiging fully operational na ito ayon sa DOTR ay uh, uh, mawapalaanitin na yung itinalagang bank augmentation dito sa may MRT North Avenue Station. Uh, actually, hindi man siya totally aalitin pero ay uh, ililipat lang ng lugar at uh, para nang sa ganun ay uh, nandun na rin siya sa may uh, uh, itinalagang uh, bus stop dito sa kahabaan nga ng uh, EDSA. Diyan mo na latest mula rito sa EDSA Quezon City para sa Asian News or Ringas. We live in interesting time. Mga pangyayari sa labas ng bansa Balitan Abroad Tumampas na sa 2.5 million ang coronavirus cases sa Estados Unidos. Ito ay batay sa ginawang tali ng Johns Hopkins University kung saan umabot na sa 2,500,419 ang confirmed cases. Sa nakalipas na araw, nakapagtala ang U.S. ng 43,121 na bagong infections at nasa 502 naman ang bagong nasawi. Kaugnay nito, mayroon ng kabuang 125,480 COVID-19-related fatalities sa U.S. Nakapagtala naman ng bagong record high ng daily cases ang Florida, Georgia, South Carolina at Nevada. Panalo sa pamamagitan ng landslide vote si Iceland President Goodney Johansson sa katatapos na eleksyon sa naturang bansa. Ang naturang bansa ang ikalawang European country na nagdaos ng halalan mula ng alisin ang coronavirus lockdowns. Nakuha ni Johansson ang kan uh, kanyang ikalawang four-year mandate matapos na makakuha ng 70% ng boto kontra sa kanyang kalaban na si right-winger Goodmunder Franklin Johnson. I am uh, honored, I'm proud, uh, I am also full of modesty, I hope, I uh, have enjoyed for the last few, four years uh, great support here in Iceland and this uh, result of this election uh, is to me proof of the fact that uh, my fellow Icelanders, my fellow citizens here in Iceland have uh, approved of how I have approached this office and have given me a mandate to continue uh, fulfilling this role uh, as I have been doing for the last four years. So, yes, it is fair to say. I have uh, in my previous life as an academic and historian uh, observed elections and examined elections and uh, when you have uh, the first results of this nature you can be 100 percent certain that nothing is going to change significantly uh, as we continue the counting i consider because there was some fear or apprehension that uh, with the polls uh, giving me a clear lead that uh, people would feel uh, complacent uh, deciding not to go and express this right because this Nagdulot ang malawak ang pagbaha sa Northeast India ang annual monsoon rains. Ayon sa mga awtoridad, pinakamalubhang na salanta ng baha ang Assam State sa Northeastern India. Labing anim na katao na ang naiulat na nasawi dahil sa baha. Napilita na rin lumikas ang maraming mga residente at marami ang pansamantalang tumutuloy sa mga temporary roadside shelters. Ayon sa ilang residente, nasira din ng baha ang kanilang mga pananim at problema rin ngayon ang supply ng pagkain at inuming tubig. At yan ang naging kabuuan ng ating may init na balita. Sa pangalan ng ating mga kaagapay sa si Eagle News Service, ako po si Maricar Velasco and we live in interesting times. Susunod na ang programang sa ganang mamamayan kasama si na Congressman Dante Marcoleta at Jensu Borjaga. Sumayin niyo ang mga balitang ginag, maingat na isinunan at inihanay ng Eagle News Service.